So we have officially broken the bank. Our crowd of radical fans who are into health, life, business, and investing have officially broken the bank. wanted to welcome you to the Patreon page. I'll get this. I like strawberry bananas. That works. So it was better than free. We actually got paid to buy it. So now my wheels are turning, right? And apparently the trick to this is not only apps like... So I wanted to do a quick video with you guys on my personal stock investment picks for this upcoming week. Hey guys, good morning. We just made it to Fayetteville, Arkansas with our load. Whether you come from the trucking side of things and whether you come from the more entrepreneur business investment side, definitely check it out and I look forward to connecting with you guys soon. Hey guys, good morning. First of all, congratulations to everybody who has joined Robin Hood. We had a total of 32 people join Robin Hood and 65 since I started talking about stocks. So obviously we have a lot of interest. It's very exciting. We had so many people join so quickly that Robin Hood actually got a hold of me. Like I had no official sponsorships with Robin Hood, first of all. This is just something I wanted to tell you guys about and be able to share with you guys because I've done so well as an investor on Robinhood. I just absolutely love them. So I saw the affiliate link and I'm like, this is a great opportunity for everybody to get a free stock and then I'll make some extra money on the side by getting a free stock as well for referring you. So I got official word from Robinhood. They said that I have hit the top influencer status on Robinhood there is no higher level that you can get. And they apologized, but they said, I'm sorry, but we can no longer give you free stock because you hit our maximum limit. An influencer can hit and still get free stock. But the good news for you guys is for those that are still waiting to join Robinhood, I will list it in the links below. You guys will still get a free stock. And Robinhood was adamant about that. It's just, I won't get a free stock for referring you, which is fine at this point. So we have officially broken the bank. Our crowd of radical fans who are into health, life, business, and investing have officially broken the bank with Robinhood, so it's, it's quite funny. Anyway, I wanted to share with you guys today on margin, because that's what I was talking about last time, was the benefits, how you can use margin, you know, what it is, how you can use it. I want to get a little more into what it is and kind of the pros and cons. This is not going to be a video like, oh, now you better be careful, you know, you better be careful with this. I, I don't want it to have that feel because margin has made me a lot of money on Robinhood and it will make you a lot of money as well if you use it correctly and if you make wise investments. As always, I should say investments always risky. I have to put that out there as a statement. Do so at your own risk, but I'm telling you guys, like personally, I have no regrets. I absolutely love it and I am learning more and more about investing every day. So what is margin? So margin is essentially a line of credit that a trading, a brokerage or a trading platform like Robinhood extends to you if you meet certain criteria. You know, some give you that right off the bat. Others want a minimum account balance. If I'm not mistaken, Robinhood does give you a certain level of margin as soon as you sign up with the accounts. I think it's two times margin. I am not sure on that though. I do know if you hit Robinhood gold, you get a three times margin. So what that means is if you have $10 in the Robinhood account, then they will also extend to you uh, 30 more dollars because it's a three time margin to be able to trade with. So what happens when you utilize that margin is you're essentially borrowing from Robinhood. It's like borrow, getting a loan at the bank, right? Except you have no, you don't have pay dates, you don't have payments. It's no hassle, no nonsense. 
and it's very low interest. Now, one of the things that kind of scared me away from margin when I first signed up for Robinhood Gold was that in the fine print, and I read fine print no matter what it is, I always read fine print. It is the best thing you can do, pay attention to detail. So I read the fine print and I was scared away initially because I didn't read fine enough. And they charge a 5%, I believe it is, uh, interest rate for borrowing, for essentially using your margin because you are borrowing money essentially from Robinhood, right? So, but, so I thought it was 5% monthly was what it was saying and it wasn't. It is 5% a year, guys. So this is an extremely low interest rate. To give you guys an example, my average recently utilizing value investing has been about 8% on average is what I'm making on my investments every 10 to 14 days, give or take. You know, some I've made a half a percent and 1%, some I've made 12, some I've made 14, but essentially I'm averaging about 8% um, on my stocks every 10 to 14 days. So I'm constantly buying and selling. So it calculates to like less than half a percent interest a month for using margin. And at that rate, it doesn't even touch the amount of earnings that you can make if you make wise investments in you know that same time frame so it's not even a blip on the radar like it is the tiniest thing and so it scared me away for the first you know couple of weeks and that because i didn't understand it but once i found that out um that's all they're charging guys so if you're borrowing a thousand and i believe that's only if you borrow above like a thousand dollars in margin there's a certain there's a certain level that you have to borrow before they kick in that interest rate to begin with so it's not it's like non-existent so what are the risks of using margin because i love this concept i will tell you what i did last week i i drive a truck so some of you so some of you came over here from American Truckers. That's my other YouTube channel. It's a much bigger YouTube channel because this one is new, but I am a truck driver. I'm a lease purchase operator. So I am making payments to pay off my own truck. I have a very nice Volvo and I do this as business with my partner and boyfriend, Jordan. And we drive all over the country and make good money doing this. Well, one of the things without getting into complications is essentially we get paid a set amount for fuel on our loads, right? So if we're going a thousand miles on this run, they will allot us a payment for the average fuel cost based on the national average diesel price for that load. So that essentially, it's what it is, it essentially reimburses the owner ops, the lease purchase drivers for their fuel for taking that load. So that's an extra bonus check that you get on your settlement on top of what you get paid to run that load. So here's what I figured out guys, and you can use this in any area of your life as far as saving money goes. So one thing that I did was I got, went, okay, if they're paying me at the national average diesel price, what happens if I buy fuel much lower than the average national diesel price? For instance, the other day it was like 20 cents lower. That equated into a profit on my fuel surcharge of like $17, guys. If you're going to the store, if you're you know buying something with a coupon, if you're just finding any ways to save money like that, the little thing that I like to do is to roll those savings immediately back into my investments. On top of my set $40 a week, which I still put in the account, like that is all I'm investing, guys. I'm dealing with huge margins. I'm dealing with thousands and thousands of dollars. Hell, I think we just hit a $9,000, nearly $10,000 total margin on Robinhood. So I'm trading big figures and I started with $40. Like it's crazy how fast this builds up. Speaking of margin, what I did was I rolled that $17 fuel surcharge savings, immediately uploaded that into Robinhood and guess what happens once it hits the Robinhood account because I'm a gold member. That $17 just multiplied times three. So that $17 immediately became over $50 in total buyer credit. So that tiny little savings, I now multiplied to 50 some odd dollars, which I immediately invested in a stock, made a percentage on, cashed out, and then took that, you know, extra $5 that I made on that investment 
and now all of a sudden I have $57 times three times. It just it accumulates so fast, like you would not believe it. So what are the dangers, the cons of using margin? The danger is obviously if you borrowed money from somebody and bought a bunch of investments and those companies completely went over and you lost all of that, you still owe the money. You know, this isn't free money that they're giving you permanently to just pocket, and never pay back. This is essentially a line of credit um, that the platform is giving you to trade with. So what happens, for instance, if you bought a stock for $100 on buyer margin and that stock is worth $100 a share, so you bought one share of stock for $100 and then all of a sudden that company turned into like an Enron situation for some of you that remember that years ago and you lost everything. It, the stock price went to zero. Well, guess what? You're going to owe Robinhood. Essentially, they're going to yank $100 out of your cash value on the account or whatever cash you have in the account. If you're tied to a bank account and you don't have cash in your account, they're going to yank it out of your bank account. So that is one cautionary note about buying with margin. Now the stocks that I invest in, the companies that I invest in are time tested, undervalued, yet solid companies that major adv advisory firms are recommending. These aren't companies that are likely to just close up shop. Also, I don't dump all my eggs in one basket. My philosophy is take the analyst I love Montley Fool because on there they have a percentage of accuracy. They compare it to the S&P 500 and how well they're performing compared to their own analysts. And they're outperforming by like five times the S&P 500. So these are very solid stocks, guys. So one thing I will do is I'll buy five to 10, sometimes 12. I'll divide my, my total investment money plus my buyer margin. I will invest the entire thing. Like I use every bit of my margin. That is my goal. Like as soon as the new stocks come out and I buy, sell and trade and made my profits, my goal is before the weekend hits. I'm gonna invest every cent of all of that money and put it to good use so it can begin to earn in interest in the meantime. I don't want it setting idle if I can get a good deal. But what I will do is I will spread that total amount and divide it between 12 stocks if I'm investing in all 12 or five companies. So the likelihood that all five would completely just go under like an Enron is very unlikely. So it's a very safe situation. You know, some people ask, well, what if, you know, there's a major depression? What if the stock value goes to, you know, loses 90% of their value? You know what I'm gonna do? If they lose 90% of their value, First of all, as long as I have that stock and they're still in business, I, I don't owe anything except a very minute interest rate to Robinhood for borrowing that money at a half a percent a month. That is nothing, and I think it's less than that. So first of all, if all of my portfolio, we hit a major depression, everything lost 90 some odd percent of their value, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go down to the local bank and I'm gonna borrow $1,000 and I'm going to buy massive amounts of all of those stocks and hold on to it. I buy more when things are down. Look at the Rockefellers. Look at some of these major banks, guys. This is what they did when the, they, they essentially held together the economy because in the time of the Great Depression, they went crazy buying. They were like, that. this is the time to buy. Everything is being under sold for pennies on the dollar, this is the perfect time to snatch up millions and millions of shares of these companies. And all of a sudden they found themselves to be major percentage stakeholders in these companies. That's why I have no fear if I'm making good, solid, sound decisions in my investments for if they lose value or whatever. For instance, PayPal did that this last week. PayPal hit in a 52 week high, right as, by the way, one of you guys got rewarded with PayPal with PayPal stock and immediately within hours, it hit a 52 week high. It was like $122 a share. So somebody who signed up for Robinhood got a $122 stock immediately the same day. So I'm sure they were very happy, but immediately following that a day or two later, that stock value dropped down to $115. 
I was in it for about 117 a share. What did I do? I got excited because their numbers were solid and PayPal is in a great position to show massive growth in the upcoming months. So what did I do? I bought extra shares, which brought down my average price to 116 a share. Now when it goes back up to 120, 122, whatever it goes up to, it commonly fluctuates, I've noticed recently, up to 120, 115, 120, 150. It's like a roller coaster, just constant. So as soon as it comes back up, I sell off immediately and you know make a really good profit on it. But anyway, guys, I did want you to be aware of some of the dangers that are involved in buyer margin because you are essentially borrowing money, even though there's really very little catches to the whole thing. It's no nonsense. It's a great way to leverage your investment money. I mean, think about this, guys. Think about this. Think about this. So if you're putting $40 a weekend and you have three times buyer margin, that $40 turns into $120 a week that you're putting into investments. So just putting $40, you have a buying power of 120 a week, which multiplies constantly times what you're making, mind you, in that week or two that you're holding on to those stocks and buying, selling, trading, all of that, and then cashing out and then all of a sudden, you know, your earnings go three times. So some people may say, well, I don't have $40 a week. Like I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Put $5 a week in, put $10 a week in guys, because if you put $5 a week and you earn, you get yourself to gold, that's gonna be equal to $15 a week. You know, if you're doing 10, it's gonna be 30. So you can really leverage the tiny amounts of investment money that you have. Really, anybody can do this, quite literally. It is, it is amazing. But anyway, guys, that's enough for now. I just wanted you to be aware of some of the pros and cons and kind of my overall investment philosophy when it comes to using buyer margin on Robinhood. Love you guys and more very soon.